Hey everyone, this is Sam Gold from FuelGoals.com. Today we're going to talk about the matchup between New York Jets wide receiver Brandon Marshall versus Seattle Seahawks cornerback Richard Sherman. In this game, Jets quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick targeted Brandon Marshall 12 times, where Marshall held in four of those, gaining 89 yards and a touchdown. Out of those 12 targets, Sherman came away with two interceptions. From a general theme standpoint, while the Seahawks are a zone team, Sherman did follow Marshall during the game to his side of the field and he occasionally lined up in the slot playing man-to-man -man coverage. Outside of that, he played as the outside cornerback, typically on the solo receiver side with the Jets presented the 3x1 set. Now Sherman didn't always cover Marshall in this game, and this is the interesting part of the trend. Even though Sherman would follow Marshall to his side of the field, the Seahawks still play a decent amount of zone, while Sherman still played as his outside cornerback role. If Marshall went to the slot and Sherman played outside, then 9 times out of the 10 the Seahawks were playing zone. Honestly. If you want an early read on this defense, debating if it's man coverage or zone, I will line my star receiver in the slot on Sherman's side and see where he lines up. Using this guide, I know that if Sherman goes to the slot, the defense is almost definitely in man, while if he stays outside, he's in zone coverage. Now there is no such thing as a perfect pre-snap read because the Seahawks do run other coverage variations as well, but in this game, the coverage did follow this pattern a very high percentage of the time. Going back to this game in particular, it was a definition of a game of halves. Marshall clearly won the first half, gaining 72 of his 89 yards in addition to scoring his touchdown. While during the second half, Sherman absolutely shut Marshall down, allowing one catch for 17 yards on a confusing defensive pass interference call. Let's start by looking at the 41-yard reception Marshall caught on his second target. The Jets are in shotgun in a 3x1 formation. Marshall is a solo receiver at the bottom of your screen, and he runs a streak down the sideline. The Seahawks are in man-free defense, playing with Cam Chancellor deep while their other defensive backs are man-to-man -man coverage. Man-free coverage is also called cover one man. After the snap, Sherman attempts to press Marshall to the sideline, but Marshall uses his strength to push Sherman off of him to create the separation necessary to cut back inside. Sherman's hips are facing outwards, while Marshall's hips are facing down the field, and it's at this point where Marshall completely has Sherman beat swimming past him. Now Sherman knows he is beat, so he attempts to slow Marshall down by holding on to him. Even though this is definitely illegal, Every single coach and every single cornerback in the NFL is completely okay with getting a defensive pass interference penalty instead of getting beat down the field for a deep pass. It doesn't work, however, as Marshall slips by Sherman to accelerate up the field. Fitzpatrick places the pass low but in stride to his receiver, allowing Marshall to gain 20 yards after the catch before being forced out of bounds. This is an excellent release off the line of scrimmage by Marshall and a great illustration of how to use strength to defeat Sherman's press coverage. In Marshall's third target during the game, he caught a pass on a hitch route to the sideline. While the Seahawks are actually in cover three, Sherman has a solo lock call playing Marshall one-on-one. -on -one. In this defense, it looks more like man-to-man -man coverage on this side of the field as opposed to your zone bail technique you see on the opposite side. To combat this coverage, you typically see a wide receiver have a choice between a fade and a comeback depending on how the defender plays you. But in this particular play, Marshall fakes the fade route down the sideline and breaks it off at the 42-yard line to get underneath Sherman's coverage. On Marshall's third reception of the game, he scored his touchdown right before halftime. Fitzpatrick and Marshall executed back shoulder fade to perfection to the front corner of the end zone, and it was Marshall's release that allowed him to get open. Marshall takes a five-step release off the line of scrimmage, and then swipes away Sherman's hands speeding towards the end zone. Sherman is caught out of position, so he has to sprint to catch up to Marshall. Fitzpatrick places the pass on a dime to the front left pylon, while Sherman turns and shields Sherman away for the score. At this point in the game, I was legitimately worried for Sherman. He just allowed 72 yards and a score, and I figured he was in for a long day. But that worry quickly evaporated because Sherman recovered and absolutely dominated Marshall in the second half. And it wasn't even close. In the third quarter, Marshall was only targeted once, and that pass was almost intercepted by Earl Thomas. Speaking of interceptions, Sherman actually intercepted Fitzpatrick twice during the game. While Marshall was the intended target of both passes, I blame the first on a miscommunication between the quarterback and the wide receiver. Clearly Fitzpatrick thought Marshall was going to run a hitch, while Marshall ran a streak instead. The second interception we'll talk about shortly. On Marshall's eighth target, Sherman was penalized for a defensive pass interference penalty. I'm still legitimately confused by this call. Looking at the tape, Marshall runs a hitch route right before the sticks, Sherman has both arms on Marshall, but Marshall pushes Sherman off of him before the passes arrive to create separation. Maybe the refs didn't like the arm contact before the pass. I can't honestly say, 
but this type of physical coverage is not new to Sherman, who plays physically every single game. Let's move on. On Marshall's 11th target, the Jets were down 17-27 with little time. Fitzpatrick looked towards his favorite target, and how does Marshall respond? He stops running his route. Sherman has his slant route smothered, and because Marshall stopped running, Fitzpatrick's pass was almost intercepted by Cam Chancellor. Time kept ticking, and Fitzpatrick became more desperate forcing balls down the field. In fact, on the very next target at Marshall, Sherman was able to undercut the pass for the game-sealing interception. This interception was clearly Fitzpatrick's fault and was not anything Marshall could have done to prevent it. To get a complete picture, we need to look at some plays where Marshall was not targeted while Sherman was still in coverage. As I said previously, Sherman absolutely dominated Marshall in the second half. He, along with a renewed effort from the front seven, took away any opportunities for the two to connect. Out of all the potential passes, there was really only one missed opportunity by my tracking, and the Jets ended up scoring on the very next play anyways. The Jets run a spot concept, with Marshall running the corner to the end zone. He set Sherman inside, before breaking back towards the sideline creating separation. Sherman's hips are flipped, which is why he's able to get open. So who won this matchup? I can honestly tell you that I haven't debated a matchup this hard since the Odo Beckham vs. Malcolm Butler film breakdown I did over the summer. Just like in that breakdown, Marshall clearly beat Sherman on three plays in the first half for 72 yards and a score, but are these three plays enough to claim him the victor? This is the debate I have with this film, and ultimately after careful thought, I decided to give the nod to Brandon Marshall, even though Sherman absolutely smothered Marshall the other 30 plus passes during the game. Going forward, the Jets face the 3-1 Steelers next weekend, while the Seahawks have a bye before facing Julio Jones and the Red Hot Atlanta Falcons in Week 6. Well that's all I have for you today. Follow me on Twitter at Samuel Gold, and if you want more breakdowns of your favorite players including Russell Wilson, Josh Norman, Antonio Brown, and many more, come to fieldgoals.com for our latest articles.